Welcome back, Hatch Fabricators. So Prime Weld hooked us up today, and we're going to be doing a review on their Max Cool 3000. So in case you're not aware, the Max Cool 3000 is Prime Weld's TIG Torch water cooler. This is a machine that's made to plug directly into the Prime Weld TIG 225, but it's also a fairly universal unit that could be used on multiple machines. Okay, so we got the thing unpacked, and so far it looks like a water cooler. So this thing comes with uh, an instruction manual, and Another cool thing it comes with is a little troubleshooting guide, which is kind of cool. So water coolers are pretty simple, but we'll just kind of go over what it's got here. We have a filler cap on the top. We've got a little alarm so that it can sense if it's not flowing or circulating in fluids properly. The thing will alert you. We've got an on-off power switch. We've got a button to turn the alarm off if you're not worried about it. Or I know sometimes if you're running super long leads, these smaller coolers are not necessarily made to run really, really long leads. So you have to disarm your alarm. But you still want to check it, make sure you're flowing correctly. We got a visual aid here to see how much fluid we got in it. And then we've got our inlet and our outlet. So this machine comes with two separate options to power it. You can either get the power cord that plugs directly into the back of the machine if your machine is the newer version that has that. And if it's not, you can just get the standard 110 wall outlet. So that's kind of nice too. If you decide you want to get one of these machines and you're not running it on a prime old machine that has an onboard power source, you can just get your standard 110 wall outlet and still run this cooler because this cooler is going to be compatible with most of your machines out there. The other thing that you're going to need when adding a cooler to your machine, assuming that you were running air-cooled prior to this, is a water-cooled TIG torch. They have the CK Worldwide number 20 torch, which is nice as a smaller body torch, and they have the option for you to run either a 12-foot or 25-foot lead. So we got the 25-foot leads here, and this is your standard number 20 torch with a flex head, which is... Super nice, this is gonna be nice to upgrade to this thing down from the number 17, because the number 17 is just a little bulkier. Now this torch comes with a longer back cap and a smaller back cap, but no consumables. So you will need to upgrade your consumables to number 20 consumables. Your number 17s will not fit on this torch. So if you need to get consumables for this thing, check out Weld Models online and use the code AMCF10 at checkout and you will get 10% off on all those consumables you'll need to get set up here. So since we got the water cooler, I took the welder off the fab table over here and we got a dedicated cart for it so that the water cooler and the welder can live together on this cart. So let's get this thing hooked up and see how it performs. Okay, so after we get all our lines hooked up, the next thing we want to do is fill the thing with coolant. Um, this is what Prime Weld recommended to me. It was this can Tesco. I'll leave a link in the description to it. I didn't see a capacity on it, so I got two gallons of it. Hopefully it's enough. We'll see. We just got to get it above that line. Okay, so for anyone wondering, two gallons brought me to the top of the side glass, and I probably got... I don't know, pint left, so that was perfect. Okay, so before we get too far in here, I wanted to guys give you guys some sound comparisons. This is just with me talking the machine. Prime weld hovers right around 68 decibels without me talking. And then we turn our machine on. And we get somewhere around 73 to 74 decibels. So that's about a seven decibel jump. The other thing that I notice is as soon as you turn this thing on, the alarm will sound on it. And it's pretty sensitive. And if you grab a hold of the inlet hose and just squeeze it, I don't know if it just resets the pressure in it or what, but it'll stop. Okay, quick interjection here guys. While I was editing this, I came across some more information and I want to give a shout out to a gentleman named Ben Curtis. He kind of messaged me and we were going over some information and some of it was super helpful. I appreciate that. But what we come to find out is that the CK Worldwide 25 foot torch leads have a little more internal drag in the lines. So because this water cooler has a bypass, which is right down in here. so. That blue hose down there, I don't know if you can see it or not, is an internal bypass hose. And 
From what I can understand, this is the exact same machine as the HTP water cooler. It's just basically a little bit lower price point. So one thing you can do, I tried it out and it does help, is you can find yourself a little stainless steel eight millimeter screw. You definitely wanna have a stainless screw because we don't wanna have any corrosion inside the tank. So what I did was I took and I screwed this screw into the end of that blue bleed hose as a basically a flow reduction. So it didn't stop the flow on the bypass, but it definitely reduced it. And that definitely helped minimize the alarm going off. So I still have found that every time you start it up, if you just grab this hose right here, the little short one that goes straight, straight from the TIG welder to the cooler and give it a quick little squeeze. I don't know if that just equals out the pressure in the system or what, but as long as I've just turn it on and give that a quick squeeze. I haven't had a problem with it after that. But in the event that you don't want to give it a quick, sque quick squeeze, you can get a stainless 8mm screw, screw that into that bypass, and that will eliminate that little problem. And also, while I have your attention here, I want to thank PrimeWeld for sponsoring this video and making this all possible. And let's get back to our previously scheduled review. We got this thing all set up with some consumables. I really want to put this thing to work, so we got an eighth inch tungsten in here because we're going to be welding some thick aluminum, see if we can get this thing as hot as we can. We're going to go worst case scenario, we're going to weld some thick aluminum. I like running a number five or number six standard cup when I'm doing aluminum. So we got an eighth inch tungsten and a number five in here. So let's burn some aluminum. Okay, so final thoughts. This is kind of a short review, but this is a very simple piece of equipment, so we don't need to go into great lengths with it. One Pro, I definitely appreciate with the addition of the water cooler, being able to switch back a number 20 torch. It is definitely a luxury. It's just a little smaller and nimbler in your hands with flex lines that they come with. It's super nice. I definitely need to get some sheathing for this. Um, another Pro is it's a small package compared to my Miller cooler that I had on my old Miller. It's definitely smaller. I like it being square instead of a big round barrel. Super easy to hook up, get running, and it performed exceptionally well. I welded up all these quarter inch tabs on this big inner cooler here. It was probably about two feet worth of weld on quarter inch tabs. The whole time I could take my glove off and I could grab a hold of the torch anywhere on the torch body itself and would not burn myself. So that is definitely a big upgrade. I know just running the air-cooled torch on there, I could only get away with doing about six to eight inches of weld at a time. Not because the machine can't handle it, the machine will keep on trucking. And I ended up go I've gone through a couple of number 17 torches because I've burnt them up because they're air-cooled torches. So I'm super excited to be able to use this and not go burning up torches. The the cons, I feel like the alarm system is extremely sensitive on this thing. I mean, I guess that's a good thing so that you're not burning stuff up, but it just feels like it's extremely sensitive. Like I said, you turn it on, the alarm sets on, and squeeze the inlet hose, and it'll like balance it out or something and stop it. I don't think it's any louder than any of the other water coolers that I've had in the past. It's just the nature of having a water cooler. It's one more thing to make noise in the shop. So. So that's my two cents. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments on the machine, leave those down below. If you want to see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are going to pop up here. If you want to be notified of upcoming videos, click the bell and subscribe button and go build something, guys. So one more thing I just want to remind you guys, I am not turning monetization on until after my videos hit a thousand views. So if you want to get in on these videos and not have to watch any ads, make sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe. And this will notify you when the video pops up and allow you to be one of the first thousand viewers and not have to watch ads. So thanks for watching in guys and go build some.